welcome back to Bennock's Garage. Today we are working back on the shop truck, which is a 2012 GMC Sierra 1500. We are doing the aftermarket DOD kit. So it's going to be everything from removing, taking off the heads, taking out the lifters, taking out the cam, putting in a truck Norris cam, putting in uh, stronger springs, pretty much the works all the way around. While the valves are out, might as well hit regrind them. So, first things we're going to have to do is the nice pretty headers we just put on. They're going to have to come off the head. Pretty much everything up top is coming off. Now, this kit did include the new oil pump, which means the oil pan has to come off through the bottom. And that is possible, even with the engine in the vehicle. It's not that easy, but it's possible. So, follow along and see how I do it. Now with that, now try again up here. Make sure that's not lodged in up here. The top piece, there you go, pick that up. And that gives you your leverage. And there it comes. There it goes. Now you can take that whole piece and set it off to the side. What are we connected to here? Uh, you just have a piece going into the side, which yeah. is a vent, and it should pop straight out. It does just pop straight out. And all it is them little push. And so you just pull it once it's stored down. And then the whole thing up out of the way. Now the box pulls straight up. Yeah, rock it back and forth. It's going to pull straight up. All it is is lodged in with three little rubber grommets on the bottom. There you go. Probably didn't need to do that, but it's just easier to take it out, have the room. All right. Now, we focus on the intake. The bracket itself can stay. You're going to have three bolts to hold the head on. One, two, three. So them three bolts are going to have to come out. The intake itself are seven millimeters all the way down on both sides. You have a 10 millimeter here, three 10, mm, 10 millimeters in the back. They have to come out to get the wire loose. This has to come out to get the wire loose. And the fuel injector clips do have to uh, come off. So this little white thing pulls up. I don't know if you just heard it. A little white thing pulls up. And then once it pulls up, you pop it out. So, damn, the light. There we go. There it goes, popped up. And that's all there is to it. We also got to de-loom, as I like to call it, the uh, the whole top half of the intake. Of course, that gets pulled back, pushed in, pulled out. This alternator wire does come out, which means the battery has to be disconnected. Uh, you have up here. I can't hold that. Show me. There we go. We have a line back there that comes up to here. So I like to take it off back there on the head or on the valve cover. Ooh, she ain't budging. I don't like messing with this because it tends to break the line. So I always go back there first. So 
you're also going to be taking off the big clips here to hold all your injectors on because you'll be pulling off the coil packs themselves part of the delooming process okay so I think from here I need to get a 10 millimeter so I'm just disconnecting the battery Go. Anything to keep it from touching. Okay. I'm gonna need the open end box maybe to get to that one. This engine's sitting a little bit lower than normal. Usually it's really high. Why you gotta take this off? Get the wires out from under it. That's the only reason. Hand me a magnetic tray. That's out of the way. All right, we gotta take the fuel lines off, which is this thing. It's just a safety clip to take your fuel line off. And you have to shove a fuel line disconnector in there. These are your cheap fuel line disconnectors. And I use the third one. You can see that's the one I use all the time for the GM. So hold that. All right, you can hold the camera. Just gonna pop it over the line, slide it in, and then yeah, I got leverage. There we go. Pull that off. You got fuel going everywhere, but we're not starting it anytime soon, so that's how you take that off. So the back line back here that goes into the valve cover. At the bottom of it, there's like a, like, like a little thing you can pull. Pull that sideways and pull straight up. I see right there, boom. Pull that sideways and pull straight up. That's how you take that off. All right, so I take your line off there. This actually comes out. There we go. This is going to come off with your intake itself. And now we have everything disconnected. We got to take the seven mils and start taking off the intake rails itself or intake itself all the way down both sides. I know I mentioned it was a seven millimeter, but they're actually eight millimeters. So. Right there's one, right there's number two, and then you go all the way down, so. Need a longer extension. Okay. And they're gonna unscrew to a point and then pull up, but they won't pull out. Once you get them loose, you can twirl them by fingers. Well, like this. Get the extension. Let me see. Get the extension. And just twirl it like that with your fingers. And then, you see how it pulled up? But it's not pulling out. And you know it's good. So you can keep going. So there's one. Going for number two now. So, there's a little 
switch on the back of it. You switch the switch, pull up. Here we go. That one's off. You can disconnect it from here. This is your fuel return line. And we're just going to disconnect it here. This pushes down like that and it releases. That's a 15 millimeter to take off your serpentine belt and a 15 millimeter to take off the alternator. Any reason why you got to take that off is for clearance for your intake. The bracket itself can stay on though. Push it up. Yep. Uh, I would probably put it on this side right here yeah. and pry up. Right There's like that. Room. Yep, and then. There you go. You're hitting the intake too, so. Are you ready? Yep. Pick, pick, pick it up like that. And I'm going to prop it. You ready? Yep. There okay. you go. Now, we don't need that. We just, yep, very easily take the intake out. Make sure all the wires are disconnected. Oh, go ahead. There you go. Now, these right here have to go around this and under that, this one to go around it oh okay and then this right here let's come around and all right you should be good to pull and hold on the vacuum right here comes around and that, that went into your brake booster and there you go it's completely off put on the floor with the other stuff and we have access to the intake First thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna grab my small vacuum and vacuum all that crap out of there. It doesn't matter if it falls into the intake at this point because I'm taking the heads off and I'm cleaning everything up from there. But I'm gonna vacuum it anyways, be on the safe side. Next thing we do, we're going to take the wires off the coil packs. And then grab a 10 millimeter. And you're going to take them out here, here, down here. Oh, right there. And then the very back, way back here. You have one back here. So that's where they are. You take the coil packs off. There's eight mil. Alright, so once you get done taking off your coil packs, you're gonna take your eight mil, take off your four center bolts for your valve covers, and you get to see how good or bad the inside of your engine is starting to look like. If it's really dunked up, you know, the previous owner didn't take good care of it. If it's nice, clean, and golden brown, you know it's very well taken care of. Lead, try to leave the gasket or no, the gasket's gonna come up anyways. Okay, it definitely was sealed good, no doubt about that. And we have Honey Brown. This engine was very well taken care of. So, one thing that does have to come off is a grounding strap. There's two separate grounds going to the one bolt. So, once you undo it there, you can get this line here off, which then you can get your valve cover off a little bit easier. So, we'll go ahead and take that grounding bolt out now and uh, free that up. 
from here, you're going to take off your valley pan. Uh, I think there's 13 millimeters. You got to take off your headers, manifolds, if you have manifolds. So once you take off your manifolds, uh, you have to take off your rockers, which are 8 mils, all the way down. Now, this piece right here comes out with them. It's all like one big lift out tray. Put them off to the side. I always put left side on one side of a table, right side on the other side of the table. That way I don't mix anything up. Because underneath there is going to be your head bolts. You have a head bolt there. And right in here, you're going to have a head bolt. So you have head bolts. Uh, you don't have to take your headers completely off. They typically fold out of the way enough to get the bottom head bolts off, which are here. You have three separate. You have one, you have two, and at the very top, you have a little, little tiny one. It's also a head bolt. So, first thing we're going to do is take off the valley tray. Should be the white, white thing that pulls up. Yeah, that, I mean, the whole thing's going to pull up because it's not attached no more down to the bottom. But pull the, uh, <clears throat> the DOD out. What's that? That's the one on the other side. This? No. On the other side, there, this. that one. Pull that one out. It, yeah, it just clips and pushes back. Okay. So we're never going to use that wire again because we're making a DOD delete on this. So on the oil pressure sender, you're going to pull up, hold down the valley cover, pull up on the white clip. Okay. And then once it's. Smash in. Yep, smash in and lift up. Uh. Come on. Alright, go ahead and take out the uh, the valley tray. There we go. And that valley tray will not be going back in. On the bottom side of the engine, before you drain your coolant, you want to take your skid plate off, which is four 15s, one, two, three, four. To take off your AC belt, basically you're going to get your 24 millimeter. You're going to go counterclockwise and get a screwdriver and pry down here on the belt. So as it turns, it's pulling the belt off. And to put it back on, we're just going to do it the other direction. So we start up here and go clockwise. And we start up here and go clockwise and puts the belt back on from the back side of the, of the uh, pulley. Now we're going to take out the 24 millimeter bolt. I actually have a whole bunch of LS tools. This is a LS dampener remover that's uh, specifically for LSs. But you can also use... One of these, well, one of these, they work just as good. So first thing first, we're going to go ahead and use the impact and take that bolt off. Is to mark a box and then push them all in. They should go back in. The same order as they came out. Oh, I'm too fat. All right, there we go. Now you have access to your head bolts. First, I gotta take off the headers. All right, so once you start getting everything taken off, you have a coolant temp sense here that turns on your fans. That has to be disconnected. Your grounding strap to the back of the head has to be disconnected. But it's easier just to take it off here with a 10 mil than try to fight it back there behind the head. So just take it off here. After you, I took the spark plug wires off because it's easier to get to 
taking the header off or the pl the plug wires off. So now we will take the header headers off. All right. When you start doing your head bolts, you're taking them off. You're going to do it in the opposite way that you would normally put on your head bolts. Putting them on, you start in the center and work your way out in a circle. Taking them off, you're going to be hard to sell. As you can see, um, but you're going to start at the edges. So one, two, and the very far, three, four, come back up here, five, six, go back over there, seven, eight, and then a two center, nine and ten. And then once you do, you loosen them. You're not taking them all the way out yet. Once you loosen them, you take the top ones out. So, so it's like I'm gonna break the wrench. All right. Even if you took your water pump off first, you're still gonna have coolant, a little bit of coolant sitting in your heads that are on the vehicle. On the driver's side, you do have to take the exhaust manifold or header completely off. On the passenger side, it folds out of the way enough to get. Uh, your extension in there without doing any damage So one side does have to come off the other side does not With that being said I do recommend taking off your water pump before you're taking off the heads and You're gonna have to take out your Radiator fan or your coolant fan you're gonna have to take out your Radiator just to get the cam out to replace the cam so I'm gonna have to work on the fan next you see it's a 13 millimeter here on both sides and over oh crap over on the other side you have two 10 mils that hold on these lines here I don't know if I focus in one and down here another one so both of these are tied to the fan shroud so two three and four and that whole thing comes out minus the two plugs to hold the fans on the two power plugs they got to come off too once you get your heads off if it was anything like mine they were extremely hard to get off and it took me several hours to get them to break loose but they're finally off Next thing you want to do is take out that little screw there and that one in the middle and you're going to be taking out your lifters. Now on you, on these you see your outer lifters look different than your inner lifters. And on the other side it's completely opposite. Your inner lifters are the same as the outer lifters on the other side. That's because these over here are your DOD lifters and these are standard lifters. These would always go bad. So, how do you know if one goes bad? Well, I've done a few of these already. This is what happens when they go bad. This one, see, pulls up, pulls all the way out. Shouldn't do that. Should be nice and tight so when they fail they break apart and they do that so if you ever have a dead cylinder they, that's your culprit so you just take out them four ten ten mils and you take all your lifters out because we're replacing all eight lifters and we got to replace the cam all right, once you get your bolt out, you can pick your lifter tray out. Sometimes the lifters come with, but most of the time they don't. So, two came on that side. Two came on that side. Okay, so when that happens, you gotta get in there with something actually pull the lifter out like so there we go 
go. So, yeah. To take your timing cover off, you gotta take them all the way around. And you have two in the bottom going straight up here and here. So you just gotta take this harness thingy off to get it. Once you break it loose or once you unbolt everything, you usually have to get a screwdriver in there and try to wiggle it loose. It's not gonna you know pop freely. So now we go to the top and do the little pry. Now that I'm back on top, you can clearly see I did not take my water pump off any of the hoses. I have no intent, no need to do all the disconnects because it can just set right out of your way. No need to take it all apart. Now, to get this off, you gotta get a screwdriver or something in there and just uh, pry a little bit. If you are like me and you plan on doing the entire kit, which includes the water pump, the tensioner, the timing chain, timing pulley, uh, I mean uh, timing gear, the lower gear, basically everything that's here. If you plan on re replacing it all, you will need to drop your oil pan to get to this bolt that's facing down on the bottom side of your pickup tube. So your oil pump, pickup tube's right here. You can't get to it, so you have to drop your oil pan just to get to that bolt. It sucks, let me tell you. But once you pick up, once you drop your oil pan, you can get to the two bolts holding the pickup tube on and the one bolt holding it to the oil pump. So once everything goes back together, you can easily slide it in. If you just drop the oil pan down an inch, you will not easily slide that in because it's still attached to the engine. The whole oil pan needs to come off. I can't stress that enough. The whole oil pan needs to come off. Alright, to get your oil pan down, you're going to have to take off your uh, sway bar, both sides. You're going to have to take off this middle bar all the way across. You're going to have to drop your pumpkin and your front uh, steering. All of this is going to have to come out just to get the pan to drop down far enough. And then, to top it off, you have to get a... Uh, piece of wood or something to, to support the transmission and a jack and start jacking up the transmission about an inch to get all the clearance that you need. It's not fun, so be prepared. Alright, so the only way to really, the only reason why you really need to get this pan off is for that bolt and that bolt that holds this pickup tube on. That's the only reason why you have to take the pan off. And I found an easier way by taking the entire 4x4 unit off. The front pumpkin is sitting on, sitting on the ground. I found that easier than to try and do anything else. I also dropped the front uh, steering. Four bolts, 24 on one side and 18 millimeters on the other side. And that gives you the clearance in the front. But other than that, that's all you gotta do to get your oil pump bolts off. All right, once you get your oil pickup tube completely out of the engine, or off the engine, you can come back to the front side and take off your oil pump. So yeah, two screws, one, two, three, four, both tens. Then you can take off your tensioner, you can take off your chain, and start taking all this off. Take off your cam gear. So that's the next step. After you get your cam gear off, you're gonna take a T40 Torx head. You take out your four bolts. You know, one, two, three, four. Take off your plate. And now you can officially you can officially remove your cam. There we go. Real easy. Real gentle. There we go. There we go. We should be running out of room here soon. And there we go. I'm out of room. So now we gotta pull the we gotta pull the radiator up just high enough to clear the uh, 
the cam itself. Alright, once you get everything pulled off, you can pull your cam out, and you do have to pull your radiator up to get it out. I decided to go with a VVT, variable valve timing, delete. I'm just going to go old school, put the, uh, the truck Norris in. I did decide to use the tensioner instead of the old school middle one. I like the tensioner better than the uh, other one. This is the, uh, the one that came in the kit. The one I'm not using is that one. I just don't think that's the best option for this. You can put your oil pump back on from here. If you want to do timing, I'm sure you Googled it already, but this has to face down. See the little bump right there in the middle has to face that. And then you have to you see that little bump there. Get that to match up with that to match up with that. That's how you get your timing. And then from there, you can put your oil pump back on. And if you're going to do your springs, now would be the time to do it. And over here, I have the head cleaned up. I put new springs in already here. Uh, I'm working on the last two here. I clean up my valves before I do anything. I do a little valve, light valve grinding onto each one to make sure they reseal. And I put new valve stems on before I put anything else on. So that's what I'm in the process of here doing on this head. Uh, once this one's done, I can put this on to the other head. So, yep. Now before you put your heads back on, you do have to put in your new lifters. Okay, so these are new lifter trays. How I like to do it is I put all four lifters in the tray, put some uh, ultra slick assembly lube on the lifter roller, and then use these just to get them into the hole. They're gonna fall out, it's okay. You just got using that as a guide to get them to go uh, horizontal. Then once they kind of line up, you can just push them in your fingers and then the guide will slide right in. Assuming they're all still horizontal when you put them in. So that's how you put them all in. And then you just like tighten up to 10 millimeter. From here, you gotta clean up the head, the uh, block a little bit to accept the new head gasket. So I still gotta do that. All right. Now, you got, now that you have your bottom put back on, you can start putting your head back on after you've cleaned everything up. You want to clean your cylinders, you want to clean your heads, you want to clean everything. So I put them on. All I did was loosely tighten them down. I didn't tighten them to torque or anything. So from here, I like to start putting everything on as like heads on, the uh, valley cover on, your front timing chain cover on start doing all that now your front timing cover your kit should come with a new gasket so make sure you put your new gasket in before you put it on and from there you can go ahead and start putting everything on you can tighten the, the you can tighten the timing chain cover you can tighten the valley pan cover once they're tightened you can go ahead and tighten the heads to torque so it's going to be 22 foot pounds Starting in the middle, middle, you know, one, two, work your way out, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yada, yada, yada. Start in the middle, work your way out. And then after you get down your first 22 pass, then you do your top pieces. Again, start in the middle. So here, here, there, here, and there. Again, 22 foot pounds. And then from there, it's 90 degrees. And then after 90 degrees, you do your final pass at 70 degrees, which that's kind of challenging when its engine is still in the truck. All right. There you go. Once you're done actually putting your heads on and tightening them down, you're going to want to put your push rods back in. I got new push rods that came with the cam. If you are not using new push rods, you can use your old ones, but you do want to put a little ultra slick on. The bottom end when you put them in that way it has a little bit of goo attaching to the lifter go ahead talk to me go ahead that just like cover the whole thing it's just a tip yeah put a little on the 
tip and then show it in the hole. This one here? Uh, other side. Flip it over. We go number three. See the hole right there? You're gonna go for that hole. I have to put some hair around it. Yeah. There you go. Next, you're gonna put some assembly lube on your lifters and on your rocker arms, or lifters and your push rods. Then put them back in, and they're just gonna be uh, torque them down. Not a big deal. And from here, you're safe to put on your intake and your valve covers, coil packs, and belts. That's pretty much gonna be it. One of the, one of the last things you want to do when doing your uh, your truck Norris or cam or tuning or anything, you got to turn off your DOD. If you're putting in the cam, you got to increase your base throttle or your base uh, idle. You got to turn off your VVT. You got you know do a whole bunch of other tuning. I'm not gonna get into that. You can go go watch Goat Rope Garage or however you want to tune it, but just make sure you tune it first. Because it's going to run like absolute dog crap if you don't. Alright, first start up with the new cam, DOD delete. Fingers crossed, I have everything correct, and... my engine back together I did do a cold air intake and it is a separate box it's it's hiding instead of the, uh, the factory intake now I also was talked into buying this and unfortunately the tuner says that you can only tune with a factory uh, GM mass airflow not this so the other tuner that said it neither them uh, stage uh, three bar mass airflow who was talking shit says this is what he meant so I bought that anyways needless to say I can't use it 260 bucks flush down the toilet don't waste your money <laughs>